What's up, guys? Hope everyone's having a good morning so far. Looks like we're good to go, and let's get started with some snaps. So I'll just go into it, and then I'll do introductions and all that, since there's a bit of a tiny bit of downtime early in the room. All right, let's see. You're 22. All right, ready on time. Three, two, one, and go. So, this is Pokemon Snap. Um, if you have not seen it before, yes. it takes concentration to mash. If you haven't seen it before, it's an on-rail shooter, and it is a Pokemon game as it has Pokemon as its main features. Um, the goal of the game basically, obviously, as with any speedrun, is to get to the end. In this case, we need to go through all the levels. We're going to collect 40 Pokemon. We're going to collect 130,000 points, uh, and then we're going to get me. And then the credits are gonna roll. And it'll be a good time. Oh, there's a sound key there I was listening for. Alright, so Pokemon Snap, um, we've gone through it. It is non real shooter, which means that we're limited with how fast we can move our carts. Um, so a lot of the things you'll see is lag reduction is going to be the most apparent. So we're going to be staring up at the sky for about a, a minute here. Um, there's not that many like big chunks of dead time to throw on, thankfully, but Beach is one of the big ones. Um, and then another one that's not so apparent, but if you keep it in mind, you'll you'll see it here and there. Is I'll always want to be looking forward. Forward is max speed, but also whenever I zoom in my camera, it sort of locks what direction you're facing as far as speed goes. So if I'm looking in front and I lock my camera, in, or I zoom in my camera rather, my speed's locked going forward. Whereas if I'm looking left, right, or backwards, and I lock that in, then I'm actually going slower. So camera locking is another uh, important thing that I'll be keeping in mind throughout the run. Right now we don't have any items, but once we do have items, we'll be able to uh, have a bit more interactions here and there to get uh, better points and all that. But for now, it's just pretty standard stuff. Uh, if you saw the new snap run yesterday by Ponyu, which, uh, if you haven't, it was a good run. I would recommend checking it out. Um, but if you did, there are a couple of differences between the two games. Um, so first of all, points in this game, it's not like a per level basis that matters. It's really an overall, how many points do you have at this point of the game type of thing. Um, so our first point threshold is going to be 24,000 points. We're not going to get it here, we're actually going to get it uh, in the next level. But we need that for apples, and then we'll need 72,500 for pester balls, and then 130,000 for the poker flute later. Um, so it's a lot more like a global, you need this many points throughout the entire run. As opposed to per level, we don't have to unlock research level 2 or anything like that. Um, another great thing about this game that I really wish was in New Snap was that you can exit levels early. In New Snap, you need to go through to the end on the first trip through a level. Um, but in this one, you can really just, once you have everything you need, you can exit. So in that case, I needed 24,000 points. We got apples. I was able to exit, get the apples, and come back in because we will need apples at the end of this course um, to unlock... Volcano. Now that we have apples, uh, it's going to be used for one of two things, either hitting Pokemon, so you just saw me hit that Electabuzz, um, or it's going to be used for taking better pictures, which we'll see a little later. Um, Vulpix, I think, is the first one. Actually, no, Magnemite. Magnemite's the first one. But yeah, just let's just do a few interactions with Pokemon and... Uh, Helps a few things here and there. The most important thing, though, is that uh, we will be unlocking Volcano. So the good luck. Uh, 
There's a sound cue that I was listening for, but I messed it up. You just lost like all four frames of lag. Alright, as unfortunate as that is, that is not, uh, you know, the worst mistake in the grand scheme of things. So, for Dugtrio, we actually end up getting a worse Diglett since we need to take three pictures of Diglett to get this Dugtrio. Um, it ends up gaining about 500 points overall, just because getting the double Dugtrio is a lot better than the single one, even though we do end up losing a lot of points on Diglett, it's still overall worth it. Alright, so here there's a setup for Magnemite, and I'm gonna try to do pretty much everything at the same time, which is get a picture of Magnemite, um, make this electrode explode, get a picture of Magneton, and that was actually really good, because in practice I messed that up. So, that strut does end up being a bit risky, but uh, if it's practiced enough it's not too too bad. But if electrode explodes without us getting Magneton, we're sort of in a pretty bad spot, because that's at best a 30 second time loss. Um, at worst it could be like 50 seconds, depending on things later in the run that uh, you can't really control. But yeah, it looks like both these pictures are good. And we ride on. So if I have about 55,000 points, that's good. We have 56, alright. So we're pretty much chilling on points. Uh, Volcano, a bit of a shorter level, only six pictures to get. Uh, that should be fine. Um, usually without Vulpix, it should be facing you. I think I took it like a tiny bit later, but... We have enough points, so as long as I don't mess anything too badly, it'll be fine. What was Brother Quo? That's actually my evil twin. Little known fact. Is there beef between old Pokemon Snap and new Pokemon Snap? I don't think so. A lot of the earlier new Snap Runners were just also old Snap Runners. Oh, am I sick? No, I'm not sick. Alright. So we need... Magmar to do that. Um, since Magmar was closer to me, I tried to bonk Magmar so that he wouldn't get to the apple first, but uh, he ended up getting to the apple first anyways. But it's okay, we recovered. Also, that was a bit late. So because I have enough points, um, I can go for a very early Moltres. I do lose, like, sort of 4,000 points there, um, but it saves seven seconds over getting a really good Moltres, so it's worth it if you have enough points. Which everything else was like super good, so pretty sure we're fine. Alright, so we have enough points for the Pester Balls, but we can't unlock a course, which is River, and an item at the same time. Uh, so we're just going to go in, take a picture. This counts as a Poliwhite for some reason, because uh, he's sort of like chilling in the top left corner. And exit. Um, alternatively, you can also put a picture in the album, um, but we do need. Oops, I missed him. Unfortunate. We do need that 40 Pokemon um, benchmark, I guess it's called. Uh, so we need 40 Pokemon, and it's just faster getting Poliwag the first time around, even though we lose more points on it. Oh, I killed Bulbasaur. What am I doing? No! I'll just wait for a pretty cute Bulbasaur there. And that's good. Alright, so there's a setup here <laughs> that I thought I was going to miss because I had to, to get that back of Bulbasaur, but now we're fine. So I'm listening for a sound cue here. I already threw the first couple apples for this first slowpoke. And then the second slowpoke out here. Just gotta throw the apple like that. And he's already at his position. 
we can get a shelter biting slowpoke's tail we can get slowpoke eating the apple and then we'll get slowpoke over here and it'll be a good time 64 follow back advantage yeah on Wii and uh, Wii U you can actually not do that so they actually do need to go to the album we also did that in 250k points which is the category that gets 250 thousand points as the name suggests uh, just because we do need those extra points all right so here we're hoping for a closer but first we want to get a porgon so there's three chance that cloister and there it is excellent and if I can get a double, no, okay. So if you get closer, you save about 30 seconds. The backup is getting a Jinx later, which costs 30 seconds. But we got a closer, which is good. And that also lets me try for a trick later, which is even cooler. Which is called Weeping Bell Snipe. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Things looked pretty good. So the goal here is like 105,000 points-ish. Um, if we get 130,000 points going into Valley, which is the next course after Cave, one of us is perfect. Uh, so if we have 130,000 points into Valley, then that's like the best case scenario. If not, we need to take extra pictures in Valley and that loses three seconds per picture. Um, so the more points we have going into Valley, the better. If you have over 130,000, doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't lose or gain you any time. Um, but having less than 130,000 does lose you time. Oh, nice, sorry, we got him. So these Bulbasaurs are actually fake. They're dittos in disguise. But we can get a ditto jumping, and he sort of like expands when he jumps, which is a bit funny to see, but also it gets you a bunch of good points. And we like those points. Alright, so over here I'm going to try for a trick. It has like a 30% success rate just because of uh, it depends on how weak and low is moving. It's not skill issues, I swear. Um, but I'm going to snipe coughing at a specific time. I'm going to try to snipe Weeping Bell from pretty much across the map. Um, and if that works, I can get um, a really good Jigglypuff coughing and then Victory Bell is going to pop out earlier. So I'm going to hit Jigglypuff and an Apple for later. I end up missing by not too, too much, which is unfortunate. Just pretend he got hit and he went in, and that's the Weeping Bell snipe. Alright, sure. On the other hand, though, this basically like guarantees that I get 130,000 points, just because getting that weakened ball super far away does lose you a lot. So, at the very least, silver lining. All right, and assuming I didn't miss anything, uh, we should have 40 Pokemon here. We do, excellent. And we have enough points. So we're in Valley. We have two goals here. The first is getting this Pokemon sign. Excellent. The second is getting to the end of the course. So we're going to be looking up. Unfortunately, not much uh, going on here in any percent. In 100%, you need to take 12 different pictures. A lot of them are pretty cool. Um... What other categories do we have? Pretty much every other category does things in Valley, but any percent doesn't. So I'll tell you a little story. So I moved out recently. I'm in my new place right now. Um, and I'm in the room where we had, or where we were supposed to have, my computer, my girlfriend's computer, and other things. There's also a big AC unit here. Um, so I had my uninterruptible power supply, which think of it as like a power bar 
that's also a laptop battery, so if it gets unplugged or if there's a power outage, things don't just shut off. I have my PC plugged into there, and I go to plug in my audio mixer, and sparks came out of it, and then my PC shut off, which for an uninterruptible power supply to be interrupted is not a good thing. So I look into it, there's a little light that says wiring fault on my power supply, and I'm like, that's not very good. So I do a few tests here and there, check things out. Apparently the plug that my PC was plugged into was not actually grounded, which is really bad. But also the AC unit was in another plug that was not grounded. So lesson of the day, make sure that plugs are grounded before you plug your PC in because uh, yeah, it's, it's a three pronged outlet there's no indication that it's like not grounded or anything. It was, uh, you know, double check your stuff basically before you plug things in. That's the lesson of the day. Thankfully, there's one outlet in this room that is grounded, which is where everything's plugged in now, except the AC unit, so I'm sort of cooking here, but that's neither here nor there. We are at the end of the course. So we gotta do some Squirtle Bowling. Um, if you ever pick up this game, which by the way, you should. First of all, it's a very fun game. Second of all, it's very easy to learn. Don't throw an apple here. I did that once in a marathon run. And it was not a good time. Because uh, Squirtle doesn't move. Now, if I'm good, I can throw a pester ball here. And I'm not good. All right, well, pretend that that hits. You were supposed to hit the, the Mankey, so. You can throw the pester ball over the hill, hit the Mankey, and it saves a bit of time. I'm unfortunately rusty. I can still mash. All right, so we have our Pokemon sign. Technically, we couldn't submit our Pokemon signs until we got to Oak at the end, but since we get to Oak before the Oak check, we can take that to Pokemon sign a bit early. And we get the Dash Engine, which lets us go fast. You're here for the best part. The mink at the top is pretty cool. Alright, so our goal here, we need to get the six Pokemon signs. We already got the Dugtrio Mountain. Um, but we need to get the five others uh, to get to Mew. Um, because Oak's like, oh, the Pokemon signs represent the constellations in the sky. Um, and that points to Rainbow Cloud. So that's that's the story aspect. Which, frankly, in my opinion, is still a better story than New Pokemon Snap, but we're not going to go there. Alright, so Cave pretty easy. This one's also pretty easy. We just need to play the Book Boot. Uh, and then the next two are pretty cool, in my opinion. But we'll get there when we get there. That is a tree, by the way. It's in the shape of Cubone. I always thought it was a big rock, but uh, no, apparently it's a tree. Alright, so Volcano, if I'm fast, I can just look upright and throw a pester ball. And if I'm good, it works, which I am. Excellent. Alright, well, for all the redeeming that I did, it just got destroyed in two seconds, so. Alright, Tunnel is probably the most uh, involved sign. Uh, so first there's an Electabuzz and the Electro that we saw earlier. Uh, we're going to slip right past them, and I also do that while lag reducing, so it's effectively done blind, but it's good. It's, uh, it's easy enough that you can do it blind. We're gonna throw an Apple to Pikachu, which I missed. Oh no, go Pikachu, go. Alright, he should be fine. Sanity check. All right, we're good. So Pikachu's going to wake up these Zapdos. Um, and when he does, there's actually in the soundtrack drums and bass that comes on, which is cool. 
in my opinion at least. We're not going to hear it much though, but it is a pretty bopping soundtrack. The last one is the King Blue Rock. That was it. That one's also not too difficult. I feel like some of these it was uh, the interns' jobs to put the signs in and some were the developers, but... So Oak tells us, oh, constellations, Rainbow Cloud. So from this point on, we have about a minute left of the run. Um, and this is the Mew fight. So when you take Mew six times, uh, she spawns randomly, um, so we sort of just throw at a specific spot, hope that she spawns in front of us, if not, just react to it and throw. But if you can get a snipe, ah! If you can get a snipe, it looks pretty cool. Oh, I almost had it. No! Over 5. Alright, well, close enough. So we have a 50 50. I always go to the right. Did I say right? I said left. And get Mew. Mew doesn't need to be centered, doesn't need to do anything, it just needs to be in the shot. And that is that. Alright, so time is coming up in like five seconds when the red text shows up, and time. So that was Pokemon Snap! Hopefully the rust wasn't showing too much, but... I still think I did pretty good. Yeah, I wasn't running it. Was it fantastic? Excellent. Uh, what was the final time? I wasn't running a timer on my end. Uh, your final time is 21-21. 21-21, nice! That is... acceptable. Solid, I think. So, uh, good job, Quo. Uh, thanks for showing off Pokemon Snap, OG. Yeah. Uh, this was takes me back. This was uh, one of the first games that I used to rent out of uh, Blockbuster. So, <laughs> <laughs> same. <laughs> <actually. laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, it's been a while. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna take a big break. Thanks again to Quo. Uh, I'm gonna try and think about the abstract concept of the passage of time. So, uh, 